bucket. They, they yeah, call 20 it, quart thing. They call it a pail, uh, but I call it a bucket, a five-gallon bucket. And then if you buy it by the barrel, they call it a drum. If you buy it by the drum, it fits five gallons, and it's $519. When you said, when you started telling that tale last night, you said $50. I, I said, you what you I said Randy, by gosh, I looked at it. Randy said he had 560 people up there waiting this morning by some of that 25 And I got dollars. all excited, and I was thinking, that's, that's a quarter of a quart. And then he went along, he said, I can remember when it was a quarter of a quart. And I thought, well, I still can't. <laughs> and then you kept talking, and it went up $500. Well, it's still know, a good buy, but it ain't. I was just thinking, you know, if you could buy it, for 55 gallons of it for $50, and them our barrels of crude oil that they all the time are bragging about so much that they ain't but 40, 40 gallons or something. Them, right, and there are hundreds of them. Yeah, there are hundreds of them. I'm thinking, how many of them can I buy yeah, what we, and well, reprocess and start running cars? What we would do is do a reverse uh, trade. We yeah, would, we'll, we would we'll uh, unrefine it. Right, we would uh, square up our trade balance right quick because we'd sell it to the A right yeah. after that. What's the option of refinement? Huh? What's the option of refinement? Crude, I guess we'd have to crude it again. Yeah, there we go. I never saw that before. You realize mm -hmm. that the option of crude oil is refined oil? Well, that makes a lot of sense, don't well, it? There you go. I think the English but, language makes it. But, I, I was telling you, I remember as a young man falling up with my girlfriend to the service station. Well, they've been dumb women for years. Yeah, they were pretty dumb. And that guy was dumb out there at the service station, too, because he put five gallons of cash in my car, cleaned my windshield, and checked my oil for a dollar. Yeah. Yeah, I remember one time my people pull up and say, Give me five, and you'd put five dollars worth in. Right. And then I just wanted five gallons. Right. And then you'd argue, you was going to argue with them, so it didn't take but once to get stuck that way. They'd come and say, give me five, and I'd say gallons or dollars. Uh -huh. or dollars. Because if you said five gallons, right. I mean, if you put five gallons in, that'd just be about a dollar and sixty cents. Right. If I put five dollars worth in, he got fifteen gallons. Right. So there's a guy come up, and he handed me a five-gallon can, and he said, give me five. From what I thought, I said, you want gallons or dollars? And he said, you got a college education, and you're going to tell me you think you can get five dollars worth of gas in that can? Well, he wasn't dead. He'd sure be surprised now. I'd get 15 in there. <laughs> and if he put five dollars worth of it, he had to switch his around yeah. see if he got any in there, yeah. you know? Yeah, it, it ain't enough. To be, he, he'd take it home and put it in his tractor. His tractor right. wouldn't even get a good sniff on five dollars right. worth. You know, uh, this high price of gas, it slowed the, the driving down. I mean, people driving right much. They're driving fast. They think well, driving is off. Well, I noticed some cars that used to come by the store seven or eight times, yeah. they ain't coming by but six or seven yeah. now. If you folks want to join our segment and rat somebody out, if you've had something stolen lately and I'd like to publish it on our show, in other words, tell people about it, you don't have to give your name, but you just make people aware that it's stolen. If you want to give your name so people know how to contact you in case they've seen it, be glad to listen to you. Also, remember that if you've got a problem, we will talk about it on uh, television. If it's, uh, I mean, we'll come out and do a video if it's something that would be of public interest, you know, like you've got a problem with some sort of a government official. Now, I don't want to involve myself in any family affairs. Well, we can jump you know, right in it just like Dr. Phil. Yeah, and this your train going by. <laughs> it's gone, I reckon. Now, I tell you, I put a little thing out today before this went on, and I said if anybody had a house that cost uh, $61,000 or less, actually, I think I said sixty-eight. but if you've got a house, you live in the city, and it costs you $61,000 or less. You might want to listen up there while i got some information for you. All right. You're going to divulge that information tonight? Yes, just in a few minutes. Right. I mean, let me in a good house, you can buy a good house for $61,000. Right. Even now, but it ain't been long ago, you can buy a real good house for $61,000. Right. Let me finish telling you yeah, about, about Napper. Napper. Uh, that, uh, what's that telephone number? 562 six. Uh, 9406. I think so. 562 to 9406. It's in a book, folks. 
Boom. Five, six, seven. That's like it's 94. Six, 94, six, 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 five, six, two, two, four, two, six, two, man. Two, four, five, six, two, two, four, two, six, also, I think. But it's in the phone book. You know right. where they're at. They've been there right. forever. Right. And it, it, these are wholesalers. They got all sorts of things. You just wouldn't believe the goodies they got in here. You just have, it's about as enticing as it used to be when I looked at the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Yeah, but you just looked in there where they sold them their women. Well, all I look for, well, I keep looking on this Napa thing for the lingerie department. Yeah, but yeah. I can't, I can't find the lingerie department here at Napa. But they got good parts, folks. Uh, you can go down there and you get you a uh, lawnmower battery. A Napa lawnmower battery, new battery, not a reconditioned battery, a new battery, twenty-two dollars. Okay, that's plus tax. That's plus tax. Uh, you can go down there and you get uh, uh, five quarts of oil. You can get a filtered fit your car for seventeen dollars and ninety-nine cents. You know you can't beat those prices. You know, and it's quality uh, products. It's a locally owned. Uh, Operation, local employees, money, what money's made, other than what we send to Nashville that comes back to Campbell County that's divided out among a file and everybody else, that's tax, you know. Every time, uh, every time they sell $10 worth of stuff, you know, the, the government's done made a dollar. And that's probably more than Randy and them make uh, down there at uh, Napa. But they're in business. To serve you, they're knowledgeable, located right on the corner across from IGA. That's Napa Auto Parts. Go see them. They'll do you do your heart good just to go in there and buy from them. And now, how about the divulging? Oh, you really want me to do it now? Well, I was going to say is if you've got a house that you paid sixty-one thousand dollars for or less. I assume you're paying taxes on it. I'm talking about in the city now. We have a library down here that had a roof on it that they expected to spend $17,000 to repair the roof so it would be grand for the future. make sure it didn't get wet inside. And they got that done, I guess. Then they come up with another little expense add on expense. They put that little false front, that Mansard I ran. Mansard. Yeah. To make it, you know, look a little more like a library. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what a library is supposed to look like, but uh, our uh, city administrator, they asked him about it and he was quoted in one of the papers to say that that was to make it look like a library. That they're, you know, so they, right. they spent Sixty-one additional thousand, sixty-one thousand dollars additional to make it look like a library. They spent as much as you paid for your house, or more than you paid for your house, just, put that man's just to make it look like a library. Now consider this: at the current tax rate, they could have knocked off your taxes for about three hundred and fifty years, and and not made it look like a library. You and you and your, your children and your grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren. We had went on for several of them greats. And not one of them would have had to pay any city taxes if you'd stayed in that house at the current rates if they had just decided to pretend like it looked like a library and forget that new room. Yeah, but you got to look at this way. Well, and the people down there voted for it. And uh, yeah, all the, the entire city council did. I think so. Yeah. And the mayor, he didn't have a say in it. So. No, well, no, he he just uh, he washed his hands of it. Right there. He was out his well, hands. Uh, he, were you sure his name wasn't Pontius Pilate? I don't know, uh, but it's out his hands. Yeah. I guess he. I mean, his name. I guess he's too busy working on a lawn mower. Yeah, Pontius Pontius Pilate. Yeah. Everything he knows about yeah. Napa. They sell lawn mower parts at Napa. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they disguise them as automobile parts. I was going to say, if they sell lawnmower parts, they probably don't have to have any license. Right, yeah, I would think not, you know. And, uh, you know uh, I think we're fooled to be paying city license. Well, 
everybody when, else. When you it. wave, you're right to collect taxes from one business mm -hmm. or two businesses or three businesses. Mm -hmm. Then you are stopped mm -hmm. legally. Not it's sure. just like if somebody starts using a, a path or a road across your property. Mm -hmm. If you waive your right to stop them or, uh, for a certain length of time, then you are stopped. You can't keep them from crossing your land. Well, I think you've got a legitimate argument there, Bob, because I have checked on the uh, legal background on this, and it goes all the way back to Blackburn. I know, I know it does. It goes all the way back to, uh, no uh, at all. Black to the English common law, and I think it was a little after 1066, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a few years after 1066. That been 12, 15. And, uh, but if the, if the city knowingly has looked the other way as far as licensing businesses, then I believe if somebody had enough money to fight it in court, they couldn't collect a lot of <coughs> licensing fee from anybody if they don't collect from everybody. And well, they don't apply the regulations uniformly, so I don't guess that makes it well, they, are, they are legally liable uh, for selective code enforcement. And I know they're uh, legally liable, and they're going to be held legally liable for selective code enforcement because that's even a federal statute against enforcing a code uh, restrictions uh, or code. I feel like I'm just half of a citizen. Well, I know that, you know. I feel like there's a point of emancipation proclamation, you know, uh, it wouldn't even count it as a citizen. They may not know that I'm as much minority as that there. A uh, Warren woman up there in uh, Massachusetts, she's, uh, her great, great, great grandmother supposedly was a Cherokee. We may be cousins, because my great, great, great grandmother Cherokee. You call her up and say, Ugg, Ugg TV. Right. Let's see what this gentleman has to say. Ugg TV. Hey, how are you? Uh, Barrett Midland. Good. Well, we all right. We get. I, in fact, I am getting a whole lot better than I was three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> What's there? I had the flu, and I don't call a cold the flu. I had the flu, but it, I had a flu shot. I think that must have lessened the effects because I, I didn't die, but I. Had I didn't flu. find him passed out for three times. <laughs> yeah. Well, who'd you call when you had? I didn't call nobody, but I ought to. I'd have called. <coughs> Call I almost called the court. <laughs> See, you got me talking about it. Well, I was going to call the record service while I'm having to drag him in. <laughs> uh, that started him up a little bit, wouldn't it? They drug dogs around here. <laughs> 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 Those dogs are drugs, you know, and uh, uh, that's good old journalism. You yeah, know. Betty, I read really well, just, just, just do it just like you were in this. Uh, side ditch in the trenches with the with the people you know. Yeah. There's no sense in you know kind of being uh, show off by by using proper well, we sure pro won't proper, be, proper English. We won't be accused of that around right here. <laughs> we never be. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Mr. Shetlands for calling me from the ambulance service. Mm -hmm. I called you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I called you. No, I'm talking about. Uh, uh oh, you mean somebody important? Okay. Uh, yeah, he, uh, yes. he called, and uh, whoever that fool was that said that uh, I was talking about the ambulance service, talking bad about them, they are a ball faced liar. <laughs> well, let you fellas work this out on your own. <laughs>
job like that. I always wanted to run one of them things and turn the siren, you know. Make sure everything's working in you know, proper conditioning, man. Man, get a fire truck job, he'd have made, wouldn't he? And uh, the reason he's driving a pickup truck is they make runs to Knoxville to get parts. And that is the reason that Mr. Uh, Shuttles did. So I thought I'd fix that up. Well, they don't have the, have the neighborhood watch going. When are you going to be going again? Yeah. Uh, I just come back. Well, you ought to call us before you got back. We went up and yeah, was broke in or something. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was in Nashville uh, yesterday. I had to go to eye doctor. I got to have surgery done in my eyes. I have the cataract state mom. But uh, ain't going to be. But, no, I hope not. <laughs> I got it back. But we're on three channels tonight. We're on Up TV. We're on HB TV. We're on uh, Channel 12. Well, that's good. If you go to mafilingnews.com and click the UGTV tab at the top, it takes you to the Up TV page right. there, and you can see two different versions, two views that. of all our radiance. Right. Well, I, just want, I was just wanting to let that... Uh, well, we... Training, right? If we hear anything, we'll let you know. Right. I don't like to have people uh, talk about me and uh, saying things I don't say. You know, just like Mr. I told well, if you just hang around long enough, you get used to it. Well, I just like I told Mr. Shuckles, I got something to say about him. I said, I'll call him. I said, I'll say to his face. And I said, if I was wrong, I apologize. But I said, I'm not wrong, so I'm not apologizing. Right. Now, now stay tuned, Roger, and I'll tell you why I'm going to give you a uh, completely Same 
guy arrested two or three times in the same week? Oh, yeah. Oh, and women, they they're, they're about as, they're, they arrest about as many women as there are men now. Hey, the judgment system we've got. I guess somebody I has to load the gun. Yeah. Police, <laughs> the police arrest them, take them out of court.
Charlie? <laughs> politicians fighting over it. Truck, 
remember one of them. <laughs> but if you need good concrete, uh, ditches, is good people to do business with. Uh, they, they'll, they'll tell you straight up exactly what it's going to cost, and they're going to bring you exactly what you ordered, when you ordered it, in the uh, safest manner possible with those big, bright, big yellow trucks. That's Dixie, Dixie concrete. concrete. Hardest concrete known to man. 562, 566, I think. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. Might as well give them some breakfast. Man, that's my own heart. <coughs> you gonna feed them breakfast or me? You're gonna have to. I tell you what, too. He just, I mean, it just uh, brings tears to his eyes. But thank I just about think about it. I'm gonna go get me some of that. <laughs> well, but you know, they're closed right now. That's where you're going. Rainbow Restaurant. Located on, that would be on the uh, south side of Jasper Pike. If you're going towards the, uh, uh, what is it on the south side either way? Whether you're going to Jasper or whether you're coming to La Bolle. Located right there at the Pesos Whoopie Dee. They're open in the wee hours of the morning. They got some of the fastest and most courteous drive through service that you'll get anymore. You, there's no use in getting in that line down the street that goes all the way around the block and get there and you get a biscuit about that big. You go in that rainbow, you get a biscuit about that big. You get just as good a meat. You get so much bacon out of town the world. You get a bacon biscuit, how they can afford to put it on there. Big old sausage biscuit, a bologna biscuit, whatever you want. They got biscuits on biscuits if you want it. And their prices are reasonable. They got a breakfast of, of uh, a meat, which would be bacon or sausage or bologna, two eggs, any way you like them, uh, grits or uh, hash browns, uh, gravy. You know, and it's all that for two dollars and ninety-nine cents. Now you can't beat that. If you go down the street, I've gone down to eat breakfast down at Jackie Hughes in uh, North Carolina while I was down there. Because it just took me too long to come back up here and get it. I wasn't 340 some miles away, so I just had to make a decision that I'd have to eat somewhere else. And for five dollars or something, I had breakfast and I was still hungry when I left there. Yeah, makes a difference. Right. That's a Rainbow Restaurant. They got a breakfast bar. They also have a burger basket uh, for you to get uh, and do your lunch. You eat breakfast there, go get your burger basket. You won't need anything else through the day, and you will have saved money, and you have eaten the best you could eat anywhere around here at a Rainbow Restaurant. But just in case you're in the mood to go um, to the lake, camp out, you get to check in, you find out that all the hoses and fittings on your propane grill, and, the, and you know camp light and everything's messed up. Right. You know, before you uh, have ditch of concrete come out and pour your uh, driveway with concrete, you probably need to put down a good layer of rock. Yeah. And if you'll call uh, Ridge Runner Trucking Company, that's 871 uh -huh. uh, they'll spread that gravel. I mean, you just can't believe how good those boards can spread gravel. Or if you need mulch, They'll bring it there and dump it in a pile or they'll spread it for you. Or whatever you need, they can haul those big blue trucks. Topsoil, they'll bring you a big load of topsoil. Very, very reasonable. I know I bought some of the best, kind of, uh, best topsoil I've ever bought uh, in my life, and they was brought to me by Ridge Runner Trucking Company. And, uh, you know, it's. Next seven one twenty four. 24 What more can I say? As I was saying, if you get to want to go camping and need to get your camping system reworked because all your propane equipment's got rats and squirrels that eat the hoses off of it and stuff, Digger can fix you right up down there at Digger's Propane. Wilson's Gas, what it says on the front of the yeah. mill. I turned the middle of the road and saw Mill Holler. He was down there mixing that uh, summer brand propane up the other day. It's kind of like you do when you crank one of them things to make mulch, you know. Digger is down there shaking that big 5,000-gallon uh, uh, 
Uh, tank and shake them. That ain't 5,000. Yeah. Huh? That ain't 5,000. How many gallons gallon is it? Maybe a five, five, two, five hundred or 2,000, but it ain't a 5,000. Well, whatever it is, I mean, you go down there and try to take <laughs> it like Digger does and see if you can do it. Well, I know that he's got it blended so you can transition from cold weather to hot weather if you're right. going to do some heating or right. run your refrigerator. He probably could fix you some up to do pork chops or something to do steak. Yeah, yeah, you know. you need that smoke flavor in yeah, it. I bet he's so heavy. You know. They want some of that hickory smoke flavored yeah. propane. You know, you can't beat that. That mesky, mesky. You want a good cup of coffee, Bob? No, I don't drink one right now. Why is that cold? Yeah. Huh? I was going to say, we can both use a good cup. It's cold. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> it's warm this morning. You know, like, you know, a lot of people like to drink cold coffee. You know that? Well, it's all you got, so you got to make do. Yeah, ain't bad. Digger Wilson's propane. cold coffee that don't set good with you and got a little tomato juice in it maybe and you need to ride to the hospital vital care and medical transport can haul your hand in down there and take care of you. They will do that. Yeah. And they'll stretch you. They'll do like Franklin Bird down. They won't let you come out the back door. You know, we can't say that you 911, but can we say haul your hand in? <laughs> you know, when I went to North Carolina the other day, got it with me. I said, now you heard me tell you about Franklin Bird Cannon being strapped in that, in that avalanche. Uh -huh. And I said, this is the hill that he come out of. Well, we're going down a, a gradual grade on the new highway. But over there was the old road, that hill went right yeah. down like that. I said, that's where Franklin come out of that damn land and roll all the way down the bottom of the hill in that creek. <laughs> Did he survive? He, yeah, he couldn't get loose. They had him strapped in, but they didn't have the gurney strapped in. <laughs> the door come open. <laughs> and I, I, show, I showed David, was really, I showed David <laughs> uh, where the hill was that Franklin went down. Well, you don't have to worry about it. With it never had my vital care. They no, closed no. the door good. <laughs> no. They got an attendant back there taking care of you, too. He'd <laughs> grab you if you tried to get away. That's a privately owned and operated ambulance service. And the great thing about it is they have excellent service. And their gurneys float. Right, an excellent uh, uh, attendant to, to operate that equipment. And the great, one of the greatest things about it is that if they don't please you, they're not going to make any money. Nope. And uh, it doesn't make any difference how many trips they make per day, per night, or whatever. It does not cost the taxpayer one penny. In nope. fact, they pay taxes on the money they take in. Yep. So uh, it's a win-win situation when you call Vitacare. It was for me. 562-9370. Vitacare Medical Transport. Um, well, Bob, sir, we've got about 15 minutes left. And We've run out of advertisers, so I guess we can talk foolishness now. Anybody else there got any foolishness they won't talk about? <laughs> <laughs> since we have, <coughs> since we have talked to you, see now, give me some of that liquor there. Uh, since we haven't talked to you, brother, since you know, we, it was about time we do. But you know, uh, I'm going to tell them about some of the things I, I got down there. Well, I got, tell them what I got, got three guns that I'd like to sell. That's one. I've got, a, even I, I've got a Winchester 12 gauge shotgun that some fella asked me the other day if I knew what that thing was up in the middle of the barrel. And of course, it's a rip size for what it is. He said they put that on to reinforce the barrel. I said, Yeah, I know. I said, In case you want to shoot up in the top of a tree, you need to reinforce your barrel. And, uh, uh, but I said, you know, uh, if they put that, won't get limber if you yeah, shoot it a few times. I said, if they put that thing on there to uh, reinforce the barrel, I said, why did they charge you extra for it? I said, why is it optional, you know, if it's put on there just to reinforce the yeah, barrel? Yeah, if you didn't have it on there, you'd have to shoot yourself the well, I finally educated him that it was a rib sight and that it was an extra charge for it when you got it. It makes your gun worth more than the same. Uh, single action, single shot. What? Single shot? No, it's an automatic. 
Wow. It's a Winchester automatic 12 gauge shotgun with the rib sight. You better not go so high without the plug in it. It's, it's got a, I believe it's got a 30 inch barrel on it. I believe it's a 30 inch barrel. And oh, I got an old long dom down there with 32 inch barrel if somebody wants it. It uh, needs a little bit of reconditioning, but I'll sell it at a unreconditioned price. <laughs> okay. But now I've got the uh, 12 gauge Winchester I just mentioned. I've got a Remington 270 automatic rifle with about a 200 or something dollar scope on it. And I've got a. That's a good looking gun. That's all it is. Yeah. And I've got a Ruger Blackhawk. No, I would intend on for the scope. 357 Magnum with a 6 inch barrel and uh, it's got uh, uh, pearl handle. A barrel straight. I've well, had, that's good. I've had some Ain't nothing that, bad as a good had, barrel good. I've had some that you couldn't shoot around the corner. Has it got a reinforcement <laughs> thing on it? No, it, it doesn't have one of them reinforcing things on the barrel. You can't <laughs> shoot in a tree with it, can you? <laughs> but it's a, it's a Ruger 357 Magnum 6 inch barrel with pearl handles. Good looking gun. I, I sell one of them, two of them, or three of them. I got some awful good looking kitchen rugs if you get to need one. Yeah, you have. Tied 95 a yard and they good stuff. Right. I'm going to have to buy me some of that kitchen rug. I got two little. Uh, uh, or I That's got a linoleum for you city slickers. I got a kitchen I need to put kitchen rugs. I reckon you do. Okay. And uh, then I may need one out of four year two. You about to get your daughter's house fixed back up? Oh, uh, yeah, we're working on it. We got it dried in, you know. Now, if you get it on fire, they have to go on the inside to fight it because they pour on it on the outside, it won't work. How come? I got a roof on it. <laughs> See? It always helps. Okay, here we got her dried in. Got her looking pretty good. You know, I got one section just completely ready to go, except for the kitchen rug in there. And you don't want to put in until last. <coughs> put in what? You don't want to put it in until last? Probably not. No. But on that section, it make any difference. Yeah. Well, you'd be walking over to carrying stuff to the other No, I don't, don't go through that section at all. Okay. It must be the library or the yeah, study. Yeah, or right. well, that's what I'm going to do with the skies of that house. It's a library. It's a library, yes. Well, or did you take a break? <laughs> but I, I believe I can do that for less than six months. You should have disguised that place you had down there as a library. I know I should have disguised my place. I had a lawnmower shop. I had a lawnmower shop, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. And uh, because they have waived the right to. Uh, uh, collect uh, license from a lawnmower shop. Yeah, and also to find anything wrong with them too. Right, automobile shop. You know. You put them in one. Right. And uh, it'd be terrible if the. Uh, Look that label and the stopple thing up, Bob. Right. And it does go back yes. all the way back to. Yes, uh, and it also applies. It, 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 does, a, it does not just apply to insurance. It's a broad ranging. Uh, Legal concept, right? That's what it is. And it, I mean, it, yeah, it goes all the way from if you if you've got somebody that's building a road across your cow pasture to get to his Back tree stand up. or right. something, and and he drives over it and he drives over it and he drives over it and it goes on for depending on where you're at a certain length of time, and you decide you're getting tired of him cutting ruts in your hay field and you put a fence up, he can make you take your fence down. Yeah. That's right. But you know, it's funny. The city can't make anybody take a fence down across their right of way. I've noticed that. They sure take one down that's on your place. Yeah, I said that right. Took my fence down, but anybody else can put a fence right across. You know, and my fence was entirely on private property. And that was private. But it <laughs> <laughs> wasn't too private when they come in there. No, was. no, no. All right, but uh, you can put a fence across uh, state right of way. Mm -hmm. And go around. Right and uh, it's fine, you yeah, know. They go around In fact, it. they'll even dodge it. Yeah, go around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why then all that hard rocking every day. Go around it. Rather than going across that fence. Go around it. They knew they'd be in trouble if they went across. Yep. You gotta go around it. Right. But we don't know. That's just a hypothetical 
situation, we don't look to the rules. Right. There are no difficulties there. And I wanted to enlighten uh, uh, our viewers that uh, uh, the uh, concept of waiver and estoppel is uh, a broad-ranging concept uh, that applies not only to uh, governmental uh, affairs, but to uh, uh, interpersonal affairs uh, with things that you might have allowed to go on with your neighbor, uh, and uh, you never did anything about it. And uh, you don't come crying to us now. Right. Yeah, I'm in a fine pickle now. Yep. Yeah. It's another fine mess you've got us in. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Stanley. <coughs> Stanley. <laughs> we do look a little like Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, we do. That's a good look, you know. All right, I need to eat a little bit more. Yeah. You can be long, skinny, and I'll be the short, fat, and right. He wasn't too short. What? He what, was that, what was that old tall guy that uh, had a little bitty buddy? That Mutt and Jeff? Yeah, Mutt and Jeff, yeah. Yeah, so it was. My daddy said Mutt and Jeff was walking along, and one of them found the watch. And his buddy and Jeff found the watch, and Mutt said, What time is it? Jeff didn't want to let on. He didn't know how to tell time. So he said, well, there it is. And of course, Mutt couldn't tell time either. He said, well, it is, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. So exactly what it is. It is, ain't it? Well, you, you know, uh, I knew some guys that worked at the Hoosier Mill in High Point. I thought you were going to tell me you know people that know Mutt and Jeff. No, they, they worked at the Hoosier Mill in High Point, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And they drove from down in Randolph County uh, down in uh, Tabernacle Township, which mm -hmm. was about 23 miles, I think, to the city limits of North, 13 miles to the city limits of High Point, and then about five more miles to the mill. I worked for Adam Miller's Corporation. And of course, those machines, you know, just run so constant that when they got out, they couldn't hear a thing. Mm -hmm. So they were coming down the road, and uh, uh, one of them says, she always winded today, and the other said, I ain't winded thirsty. The other said, I'm thirsty too. I said, let's stop and get a beer. <laughs> I figured it was kind of work to like that anyway. Let's see what Ock Man's got to say. Right. Uh, TV. Hello, Ock Man. Yes, I just got to home. I didn't want to call and talk to you, couldn't Well, talk to us. Yes, I'm at the door. Have you got anything on your head? Religion up to high 
ask her long right now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I must be careful, though. The Christians might not like me too much. You know, I may be from another religion and all that. Well, that might get you in trouble, you know. Yes, but I will try. You know, we welcome I, all the ethnic groups and religions and any sort of persuasion. You all welcome. Right, whatever whatever flavor, flavor, brother, we'll take whatever flavor you come up with. Yeah, especially if you need a kitchen rug. Yes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go tonight. I, I'm well, going to go get some rest. I just got home from the work, as I say. Well, thank you, sir. Call well, again. Appreciate you. Yes, bye. I will. Marishka, have a good day, Bob and Rodney. Good night. Thank you. Hey, uh, Ugg TV. Hey, I want that last caller off, man, to call in and say, I kill you. <laughs> He's on the other side, buddy. He's for us. <laughs> Him and Tokyo Joe's yeah. on the same team. Right. I kill you. I don't think we need to be investigated by the FBI. We didn't have everybody else looking at us. <laughs> hey, if you're so kidding me, have a little fun and what good is it, you know? Yeah, okay. Anyway, great, great show. Keep it up. Thank you. We want to say that all ethnic groups are welcome. Yeah, our last caller here. Ugg TV. Hey. Hey. Phone, still your cushions. 